Uh, my name is John Carney and I'm the director of uh, Once and Begin Again and Sing Street, which is at the film festival, and I am a film fanatic. Welcome to Film Fanatics. I'm Adam Mast. And I'm Bruce Bennett. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. We're going to talk about Money Monster, but we're going to open with an absolutely outstanding movie called Sing Street from John Carney, the director of Once. I would say there will be very few films that are as smile-inducing and purely enjoyable as Sing Street. I'd like to go on record as saying this is my favorite film of the year. And Are you serious? You stole May. my thunder. Why do you always do that? I totally agree. This is the most purely enjoyable film People of like 2016. People like us who go see films, uh, we probably see 150 to 250 films a year, Adam, and we pray every week that we find a film as precious and fantastic as Sing Street. And this is a film set in 1985, Dublin, uh, and it kind of uh, echoes uh, U2's career a little bit, I guess yeah, you could you say. Yeah, you can't help but think about them yeah. as young teenagers. Exactly. It's about a young boy named Connor, played by a newcomer, Ferdia Walsh Pilo. Right. Fantastic, 16-year-old yeah. actor. He does all his own singing in this movie as well. And uh, he lives in a, a, a home with a parents who are on the verge of separating. He's picked on at school, so he forms a band, and through the power of music, he hopes to rise against his oppressors and win over the girl of his dreams. Yes. That's basically the Play setup. Named Rafina, played by Lucy Boynton, who is who fantastic. Who is absolutely superb, and they have oh. just absolutely fantastic chemistry. Uh, really great cast, actually. We should mention oh, yeah. Jack Rayner, who just about steals every mo scene he's in. Right as uh, the, the, the bigger brother, right. uh, Brendan. Well, this, this film is about music, uh, first and foremost. There's a lot of original music here. It's set in the 80s, and I would say the music holds its own with some of the best uh, tunes from the 80s. But it's also about family, about marriage, about friendship, and it's about a coming It's a coming-of-age story. This is a movie that somebody like John Hughes would have championed had it come out yep. in the 80s. Absolutely, it's, and I'm glad you mentioned once, obviously, because of John Carney, who not only directed but wrote the film, uh, so huge and the songs him. he co-wrote the, the songs, songs but it also reminded me a little of Billy Elliot it too. has a little bit of that right. and you could even throw maybe school of rock in there to a <laughs> yeah. certain certain extent but you're right the songs they completely knock out of the park and Carney is such a pro in the way that he directs the musical numbers in this mm -hmm. movie I think we are absolutely yeah. on the same page oh yeah go see this we're movie. we're begging you to see this, this film. movie deserves a bigger audience than it's getting yeah, yeah. if you love music you'll love this film and if if you're just kind of okay with music, you'll still love the story. And oh, it's, it's so relatable. Simple. It ends with a, a song sung by Adam Levine of Maroon right. 5. Written by Glenn Hansard, that who I starred in Once. Might be the best song I've heard uh, well, in a movie. Well, you in a and long, I were just talking time. before the show. I do, even though the year is early, I think the, yeah. the song will be nominated for an Oscar. Oh, yeah. It's that good. It's Fantastic. sentimental. It's sweet. It's incredible. Wonderful. Moving on. Yes. Money Monster. Yes. Don't spend your hard earned cash on this movie. <laughs> I just wanted to use that. Let's tell everybody a little bit about a money monster. It's a blue collar worker who loses all of his money following the advice of a teen, uh, TV financial host played by George Clooney. Yes. And so he takes matters in, into his own hands. He charges into the TV studio and uh, taking Clooney hostage and demanding retribution. Yes, uh, and uh, the- uh, Sounds the, like a good premise, the, Adam. The, inve Why is the investor on the edge is played by Jack O'Connell from last year, 71, right. which is absolutely phenomenal. Why yeah. doesn't it work? Uh, well, there are elements in this movie that do work. Right. I think we can both agree. And it's got uh, two big names, George yes. Clooney and Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, his studio never producer. breaking a sweat in this movie, even yeah. though it's a guy strapped with a bomb right. standing 10 feet in <laughs> front of her. Uh, and th here lies my problem with this movie. It's a pot boiler. It's about an intense situation, but I never really felt the intensity. It felt like people playing intensity. I didn't ever, I never felt like anyone was any, in any real sort of peril in right. this movie. And well, the other problem is, I, I like that aspect of it, uh, probably a little more than you do, but I think it's also trying to make a commentary on Wall Street corruption. For sure, it's and got, it really it's, doesn't. It's, it's, I think when you have big A-list cast uh, like George Clooney who's good. and Julia Roberts, you expect more. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's necessarily their performance. No. Um, this is more of a junk bond thriller than a blue chip nail biter. Yeah, you know what I actually See liked what I more about it? Than, yes, I did, that was cute. What I liked uh, actually in the movie more than the, the political grandstanding, if you will, which was not entirely subtle, right. was <laughs> the way it depicted uh, the, the commitment and the camaraderie of this, this TV show. Right. Like the way these guys are all rallying to help each other. I thought that spoke volumes uh, more than the political yeah. stuff did in the movie. Um, I think uh, Jack O'Connell steals the movie. I like George Clooney. I think he brings swagger 
to a guy that's not entirely likable. There's a great scene in the movie yeah. where you see just how unlikable he right. actually is. Do you remember but a movie Julie, from Julie a Roberts. couple of years ago called 16 Blocks with Bruce Willis? Yeah, it's terrific. Kind of has that fil well, feel. Yeah. But that film was so much more interesting, had it, a better it, subplot, it was. and was funnier. And, 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 and further still, uh, a movie like Dog Day Afternoon, which yeah. is a much more plays up the serious angle in a much more profound way. And this movie throws in a campy B-movie vibe, like Phone Booth is another right, film right. I would uh, compare it to, or even something like John Q, which I felt was a lot whiny whinier right. than this movie. But it can't hold a candle to something like The Big Short, which is right. so much more provocative Sydney Lumet's in execution. Network from a few years or ago. Or any Sydney Lumet yeah, movie, right, right. for that matter. Well, there you so go. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that this is a terrible movie, but honestly, I would say, uh, wait, stream it. Stream it. We're that in would agreement. Be my but opinion. we are also in agreement about Sing Street. Go people, see Sing see Street. Film. It's it is so good. Well, that's another uh, excellent jam packed episode yeah. of Film Fanatics. Until next time, everyone, I'm Adam Mass with Cinemass.net. And I'm Bruce Bennett with madaboutmovies.org. And we're Film Fanatics. Are, are you? Man, yeah. Sing Street. So good. I'm really glad that you loved it. Film better than that this year. I, I knew you were gonna love it. It oh was gonna gosh. be your cup of tea. I, I just adore. It just made me smile from beginning yeah. to end. And so good. it also made me tear up a little bit. It did. There's a couple the of great really chemistry. The songs are great. I love that. There's a moment where you see.